The Razer Blade 15 is a thin gaming laptop with some powerful hardware inside. But how hot does the new RTX version get? I'll be taking a detailed look at thermals and seeing how much we can improve performance with some simple tweaks. I've got the new advanced model of the Razer Blade 15 here. And in my configuration, there's an Intel i7-8750H CPU, 90 watt NVIDIA RTX 2080 Max-Q graphics, and 16 gig of memory running in dual channel. It's also available with RTX 2060 or 2070 Max-Q graphics though. So expect different results with those, and you can find updated pricing linked in the description. On the bottom of the laptop, there doesn't appear to be many vents for airflow. They're just directly above the intake fans. Inside, the Blade uses vapor chamber cooling, so a little different when compared with most other laptops. The Razer Synapse software allows you to choose between three different modes, Balanced, Gaming, and Creator, and I've tested all three. Basically, Gaming mode is suggested for applications that need GPU power, while Creator mode is suggested for CPU intensive tasks. Thermal testing was completed in an ambient room temperature of 23 degrees Celsius, so expect different results in different environments. I've tested idle down the bottom with the balanced profile, and it was on the warmer side for an idle machine. The gaming results towards the upper half of the graph were tested by playing Watch Dogs 2, as I find it to use a good combination of processor and graphics. The stress test results shown on the bottom half of the graph are from running the ADA64 CPU stress test and Heaven Benchmark at the same time to fully load the system. Some of the titles might be a bit confusing. For example, this gaming gaming one means that the test was playing Watch Dogs 2 and the second instance refers to the gaming profile being used. Towards the bottom of the graph, with the stress test going and balanced profile in use, the fan was noticeably quieter compared to the gaming and creator profiles, which you'll hear soon. But this is why applying a minus 0.14V CPU undervolt shown by UV on the graph doesn't affect the CPU temperature here. The GPU was however thermal throttling only in balanced mode, anytime it was at 76 degrees. With the gaming or creator profiles in use, the CPU temperature either stays the same or gets worse, while the GPU temperature was always fine with these profiles. However, we'll see in the next graph how performance is affected. We can see that when the Thermaltake Massive 20 cooling pad is used, the temperatures of both the CPU and GPU drop by 6 degrees Celsius, whether gaming or under stress test. These are the average clock speeds for the same tests just shown. Down the bottom, we can see there was a 500MHz all-core increase with the balanced profile once applying the minus 0.14V undervolt to the CPU. This doesn't really change if we max out the fan, as thermals are not the limitation. I'll also note that I didn't test default and max fan speeds with gaming or creator profiles, as the fan was already pretty well maxed out under these workloads. That was not the case with balanced, which is why I tested it there. We can see that at stock, the creator profile is giving us higher CPU clock speeds when compared with the gaming profile at stock, as expected, while the GPU clock speeds from the gaming profile are higher than creator mode, again as expected based on what these modes do. Once we apply the CPU undervolt though, the CPU clock speeds become about equal. However, the GPU clock speed was still higher from gaming mode. I did test out some GPU undervolting, but didn't get anywhere there. Basically for gaming, it seems like using the gaming profile with a CPU undervolt gives you the best performance, while a cooling pad helped slightly. I suspect this is due to GPU boost preferring cooler temperatures, as again, there was no thermal throttling in gaming or creator modes. Power limit throttling was what was holding these speeds back from going further. I wasn't able to boost the power limit manually in combined workloads like these either. However, based on the temperatures, going further would make the thermals worse. And while thermal throttling wasn't happening in gaming or creator modes, we're not too far off. These are the clock speeds I got while just running CPU-only stress tests without any GPU load. And despite this not being a combined CPU and GPU load like before, the clock speeds aren't really that different. The CPU-only workload gave us basically the same results with either creator or gaming mode. Although even undervolted, neither were capable of hitting the full 3.9GHz all-core turbo speed of the i7-8750H CPU. The temperatures were a fair bit lower compared to the combined CPU and GPU loads shown before. However, the undervolting never made an improvement to temperatures here. We're just getting the 500MHz or so clock speed boost. But this does show CPU-only temperatures are much more reasonable. To demonstrate how this translates into performance, I've got some Cinebench CPU benchmarks here. Again, very similar results with either gaming or creator mode when under a CPU-only workload. But even best case, we're below the usual 1200 score that an unconstrained 8750H is capable of, due to power limit throttling preventing full clock speed being reached. We can see this when looking at the TDP for these CPU-only workloads. 
in both gaming and creator modes, we're artificially capped to a 45 watt TDP, and I wasn't able to manually boost this using Intel XTU. While caps are understandable in combined CPU and GPU workloads, given the thermal headroom in CPU only workloads, I think it would have been nice if Razer allowed the CPU to boost higher while the GPU was idle like some other laptops do. Here are the GPU only clock speeds while under a graphical only stress test. We can see that the creator profile is lower than the others. Which makes sense given the Razer signup software specifically lists the gaming profile as having more GPU power, however I was surprised to see Balance doing this well here. That said, the balanced profile still runs the fans quieter than the others, which results in it running a few degrees warmer when compared to gaming mode, and hits thermal throttling at 76 degrees, while creator mode was further back as it wasn't performing as well. I didn't bother with manual overclocking here, given the constant power limit throttling on the 2080 Max-Q I saw, which I could not improve by undervolting. So how do these performance boosts actually translate into games? I've tested with the exact same Windows, Nvidia, and game updates installed. The only changes were the ones listed here. Far Cry 5 was tested using the built-in benchmark at 1080p. At ultra settings, there was a 3.6% improvement to average FPS with the CPU undervolted and graphics overclocked, the best case scenario. The 1% low rose by a similar amount, 3.7%, which I'm guessing is more due to the extra CPU performance from the undervolt, so it is possible to get some improvements with simple tweaks. If you're after more gaming benchmarks with the Razer Blade, check the card in the top right, where I've tested 20 different games. As for the external temperatures where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle with a balanced profile, it was a bit above average, mid 30s in the center. While gaming, it gets warm in the center. Low 50s, however the sides, including WASD keys, are noticeably cooler, as these areas seem to exhaust air from the fans below. The results are more of the same with the stress tests running. The balanced profile was perhaps a bit warmer. Despite performing worse, as we saw earlier, the fans also run quieter. While gaming on battery power, the wrist rest warms up compared to the rest of the laptop as the discharging battery is directly underneath. Although the temperatures are similar to what we saw while gaming and plugged in, as the internal components perform better and run hotter. As for the fan noise produced by the laptop, I'll let you have a listen to some of these tests. At idle, it was basically silent, I couldn't hear the fan. While gaming in gaming mode, it was about average compared to many other laptops I've tested. And then same results with the stress tests running in gaming mode. And these were the same as manually maxing out the fans. Balanced mode was quieter, as mentioned earlier, but performs worse as a result. But you've got the choice of sacrificing performance to run quieter. Creator mode was a little quieter than gaming mode in this test, but I found it to vary, rising up to match gaming mode at times. Overall, I thought the advanced model of the Razer Blade 15 with these specs is performing alright in terms of thermals, considering its size. There's no thermal throttling even under combined CPU and GPU stress test outside of balanced mode. However, this seems to be due to power limitations that restrict performance as a result. It's always going to be a trade-off. I was a bit sad to see that while under CPU only loads, the performance would not further boost up like many other laptops do, given there seemed to be thermal headroom available. However, that sort of thing could be improved in a future BIOS update. The 230 watt power brick didn't seem to be adequate while gaming for long periods of time. It depends on the game, but I did see the battery slowly drop below 95% and it was discharging further while playing. Although this didn't seem to lower performance. These differences in performance shown aren't hard and fast rules. There are different factors which will vary results. Primarily the temperature of the room you're running in, application of thermal paste, and even the specific hardware, which comes down to the silicon lottery. You may not be able to undervolt or overclock your hardware the same as me. It depends on the chip and its specific power requirements. So don't just blindly copy my settings and do some testing to find out where your stable point is for best results. It may be possible to further improve temperatures by swapping the thermal paste. However, as this is a review unit that I have to send back, I'm not able to change the paste. Otherwise, the next reviewer will unknowingly report different results due to what I've done. Undervolting and raising the fan speed is much easier for most people to do. And as we've seen, it did improve the performance in the Razer Blade gaming laptop. A cooling pad can help a little too, if you want even better temperatures. But as there was no thermal throttling in gaming or creator modes, don't expect it to improve much, unless perhaps you're in a hot environment. 
Let me know how much of a performance boost you found by underbolting your hardware, and what you thought of the improvements here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for the full review of the Razer Blade gaming laptop, as well as future thermal testing videos like this one.